Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, we are going to make an incredibly easy, wonderfully delicious, and pleasantly affordable dish in our slow cooker, shredded beef. Now this is a recipe that I can't take credit for. It showed up in my Instagram feed almost a year ago. It was what it looked like. Now if I recall, it was somebody on Instagram, this was just a random post that showed up in my feed, where someone had taken a picture of somebody else's Twitter picture. So I don't even know who to credit for this. It's probably been something that people have been making a long time. I only started making it after I saw it on Instagram and have made it a number of times since because it is just so simple, so delicious, so wonderful. The original version of this recipe is definitely low carb. You're looking at less than five grams of total carbs per half pound serving, which I think is a pretty generous serving, but it's not especially clean keto. Some of the problematic ingredients in the au jus gravy are cornstarch, corn gluten, soy protein, wheat gluten. What else we got in here? Corn syrup, solids, there's probably some other stuff, but if you are super clean keto, this probably is not going to be the recipe for you. I will tell you this did not spike my glucose at all, didn't knock me out of ketosis, but it's not clean keto. Additionally, in the original recipe, they used some of this Hidden Valley Ranch dressing powder, and this is a little bit carby. You're looking at 16 grams of total carbs in a packet. Again, you divide that out across several servings of this beef. It's not all that bad, but you can cut the carbs by using either the McCormick Ranch Powder or my Ranch Powder recipe, as I'll mention here, as we start making the recipe right now. For this recipe, you will need a large crock pot. This is an eight quart crock pot. And to that, I'm going to add a three pound chuck roast. That's a little bit shy of 1400 grams. Then I'm going to add the McCormick Au Jus Gravy, one packet, which I will sprinkle on top of the chuck roast, trying to get as even a coat as possible here. Then the ranch powder. If you're not concerned about carbs, you can go with the Hidden Valley Ranch. You can cut the carbs by going with McCormick Ranch, or you can get really clean ingredients if you make my recipe for ranch powder, which I will link to in the end card. My ranch powder is the way I'm going to go. Again, sprinkling it on as evenly as possible. I'm going to bust up a couple of large clumps here and then just sort of pat it out to even it out a bit. Then I have one stick of butter. I'm using unsalted butter. I don't know that it matters terribly if it's salted or unsalted, but I'm going to cover this and set the heat to low. And then we're going to cook this for nine hours, anywhere from nine to 10 is fine. It is currently 7.22 a.m., so this will be ready just in time for dinner. And here we are nine hours later. It doesn't look beautiful, but man, does it smell good. And it is so tender, it just pulls apart easily with a fork. I'm barely touching it right here. Just, just barely any pressure. So I'm going to use two forks now and I'm going to shred this up really good, making sure that I mix it around in the gravy or sauce or fat, whatever you want to call it. That way all of the meat absorbs that juice and just makes it so much more tender and succulent. Pat roast. And that is not a keto bun right there. What's up? Potato. Polish potato roll. We always had those a lot. I mean, my mouth is watering. Yeah. And we have some of the leftover sumac red onions from the kebabs we did the other night. I think those could go good on there. Oh, yeah. I should film you now, Terry. Yeah. You know, actually, I need to get a thumbnail picture ready, so I'm going to do my a little different on a different plate. All right. Juicy, tender, just melts in your mouth. Flavor. 
Um, my potato roll is awesome. So good lima beans on the side, too. Yeah, you're just rubbing my nose and all of the non-keto stuff you're eating. <laughs> okay. So this could be served over mashed cauliflower or riced cauliflower, or I suppose you could probably just eat it out of a bowl if you'd like. I put it on a keto-friendly bun. This is a sola bun. That is absolutely the most tender roast I've ever had. And the flavor on it is just stellar. That combination of ranch and the au jus, there's nothing about it that's, that dominates in terms of the flavor. Very well balanced, just juicy and meaty and yummy and incredibly easy. There are a number of recipes I used to make pre-keto that relied on beef bouillon or some sort of beef powder, and generally those are pretty loaded up with maltodextrin. And as I was trying to come up with some sort of beefy solution as opposed to that au jus gravy, it occurred to me, why not try keto chow? Now, this is not a keto chow promo. This just happens to be an ingredient I decided to use. And I found that I could cut the carbs in half by using keto chow. There's only 6 grams in a packet versus 12 grams in a packet of the au jus mix. And I only need to use half a packet. So... I guess I'm going down from 12 grams of total carbs for my au jus to 3 grams by using this. Additionally, by using my ranch powder or the McCormick ranch powder instead of the Hidden Valley, you're cutting the carbs fairly considerably as well. You go from 5 grams of total carbs in the original recipe down to less than 2 grams of carbs, total carbs, per half pound serving of this shredded beef in this version. For my keto chow version, again, I've got a three pound chuck roast. And instead of using the McCormick seasoning, I'm using the keto chow, obviously. Now the keto chow is 46 grams in a packet, which is about twice as much as what's in that McCormick au jus packet. So I'm only gonna use half a packet here and I'm gonna try and distribute it as evenly as possible as I sprinkle it. And that looks like about half a packet. Next, I'm gonna add my ranch powder seasoning, about two and a half tablespoons worth. And finally, one stick of butter. This time I am using salted. Like I said before, I don't know that it makes a tremendous amount of difference. Cover and cook for nine hours. Here it is, nine hours later. It doesn't look pretty, but boy, does it smell good. And look at how tender it is, again very easy to separate with two forks. So I'm gonna get this shredded and sop up as much of this juice as I can. Mouth is watering. Your mouth is watering? Yeah. And then we'll serve it up. All right, we have a mound of shredded beef here, steaming cauliflower steaks, which I will glue the recipe to. All right, dear. Tell me what you think. Looks like it's high temperature. Uh -huh. Tender, juicy, has um a lot of juice in it, like juicy eyes. Beefy, beef-like flavoring. It tastes really yummy. Here we go. It does. I think. I think it smells beefier than the other version that we did with the uh, au jus. That is really, really rich. It's like, I almost feel like it's holding on to more fat than the other stuff did. And I mean that in a good way. This is, it's rich, it's beefy, very smooth on the palate. But what we're gonna do next not tonight, but in the next segment of this video, I'm going to vacuum seal it in a bag. I've got a vacuum sealed bag of the stuff with the McCormick au jus. I'll reheat them both and we'll compare them in a blind taste test and see which we think is better. So I have here two bowls, unlabeled other than one has got a piece of blue tape on them. So I know which 
is which. Okay. One of these is the McCormick Au Jus. The other is the Keto Chow. Okay. So I tell you what, why don't you go first? Okay. And you can have a taste of each and see what you prefer. And this has been in... Uh... It was vacuum sealed and then I reheated both of them sous vide. So they should both be fresh. Do you need a palate cleanse or anything between bites? Sure. Little Pepsi. No sugar. Zero sugar Pepsi. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, this is a keto chow, and that's McCormick. Well, I'm, I'm asking you what you prefer. Oh. Which you think is better? Uh, the flavors are both the same. It's just the texture that's different for me. Okay. And uh, which you prefer? Oh, they're both. I I like the McCormick. So you think the the blue label is the the McCormick? I do. And you like that one better? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna I'll give you my fork. <clears throat> I'll turn away so I can't see which one you're serving me. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. What? Oh. Did I turn back to? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I thought okay meant it was already on the fork. Let's redo this. Okay. <laughs> well, you're gonna be able to tell because the different. I don't know. <laughs> I'll close my eyes so I can't even see the the difference in color. Okay. Okay, that'll work. All right. Okay. Are you ready for me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. I can open my eyes now, right? I didn't look and see which one it was. <laughs> um, tastes good. Really good. All right. A tough turn to wait. Gesture that was really... I'll kind of turn towards the camera. Okay, here. go ahead. Ah. <laughs> so the texture on the first one was creamier. Okay. I felt flavor, they were comparable. There was there one wasn't like stronger or beefier in my opinion than the other, but the first one had a slightly creamier mouthfeel. Okay. Not that the not that the second one was bad, but I think I preferred the first one. Okay. Which one was the first one? This one. So I preferred this one. The opposite of what I said. I felt it was just a little bit creamier. You preferred this one. Yeah. This was the McCormick. Oh, I was you. I was wrong. This was the Keto Chow. <laughs> okay. So I picked Keto, which is fine. That's it doesn't matter. They're both very good. So. so I wouldn't I wouldn't turn down either of those. Uh <laughs> you know, I think price wise, it's probably fairly comparable because you're just using half a packet of Keto Chow. So if you are a Keto Chow customer, it probably makes sense to buy some of this to use in this recipe because then, I mean, you're cutting your carbs substantially on a per serving basis. Yeah. And they're both really good. They both have lots of beef flavor and they're delicious with yeah. the gravy. I'm, we had both for supper. The, on our next roast, I'm probably going to try out some of the other flavors of Keto Chow. Oh, yeah. You know, like maybe do see if we can do like an Italian beef with the tomato basil or try the, the taco uh, the taco soup seasoning okay. and just, you know, see, see if it imparts enough or a strong enough flavor on its own, or if it needs something else, you know, to really kick it up a notch. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for this is the great thing. Chuck roast is just, it's so cheap. And this recipe is just insanely easy to make. I mean, it's like set it and forget it. Yeah. So anyhow, that's it for the taste test. So I think that's, that's it for you. You can say your little end thing, and then we're going to go back to me in the kitchen. So you say? See you next time. Exactly. As soon as I finished this recipe, I thought, I got to let the Keto Chow people know what I've done here, and they should totally add this to their site. And I got out on their site, and I saw that there was a remarkably similar recipe already made. So just so you know, my version is a little bit different, I think a little bit better, but there is a similar recipe already out on the Keto Chow site, but I didn't copy it, for reals. 
So if you enjoyed this video, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap that subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications. And if you think this is something you're going to use regularly and it's going to save you a little bit of money, click that thanks button. Buy me a cup of coffee or some more keto gel. Thanks for watching.